morning everyone it is december th no it is not december it is january 3rd and uh, it's that time again for daily bitcoin and cryptocurrency news uh just so everyone knows i released another video uh yesterday afternoon it's an ico review of gatcoin which um i was very i was a fan of afterwards so please check that out if you haven't already um overall today in the market it's it's mixed Bitcoin is up, several good coins are up, and a lot of coins are, are down. So uh, overall, I still say it's a, it's a pretty good day. Um, market cap, you know, it's it's up huge. Okay, we're 713 billion now. We're, uh, we're you know, if it's going up 50, 100 billion a day, uh, we're going to hit 1 trillion pretty soon. Um, BTC dominance is still low. It's gone up a little bit. And you'll see that yeah, Bitcoin you know is now above fifteen thousand, thank God, which is good, um, because I was you know I was starting to lose a lot of people because I kept saying and yesterday I kept saying history repeats itself. Bitcoin will come back up, and it's important to have a large portion of your portfolio in Bitcoin. Everyone kept questioning me on it. Why? 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 You know, you know, I, I haven't seen it. You know, history always repeats itself, and everyone has a short term memory because. Just a month ago, you know, two months ago, we have seen when Bitcoin goes on these ultra pumps, um, it drains the altcoins. And it did that exactly. Yesterday afternoon, when Bitcoin jumped from 13,000 to 15,000, you saw every single altcoin tank by 20 to 30 percent almost instantly. Every single thing across the board. And then once Bitcoin got about 15,000, it, it stopped and it kind of went down a little bit and everything else recovered. You see that all the time. OK, and for us, you and I and everyone else watching this, we don't know what's really going on. OK, because on the grand scheme of things, we're, we're just the pawns in this game. OK, so let me say that, that the institutional investors are the big whales. They're the ones pulling all the strings. OK, at any given time, if they wanted to. And they say, you know what? Let's shift 200 billion out of the altcoins into Bitcoin, and they click a button and make that happen. You know, we have no idea. That's all in the background. But the only thing we can do is play the market smart, right? So if you set yourself up, you set your portfolio up the right way, you minimize risk, and you and you still gain when the market goes up, right? So that's why I advocate that. Um, I think yesterday was a good example of that. It, and there was another point i think yesterday night that also kind of did that so just be careful just because we haven't seen much of it the last month doesn't mean january we're not going to see a lot more of it maybe next week you know when we're finally back from holidays um you'll 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 see more of that so just be prepared um all right so overall um bitcoin is up nine percent which is really good but fifteen thousand. Um, BTC dominance, like I said, is still low, but I anticipate it will start going up and up and up. Um, Ripple, uh, you know, what can I say? It's on a tear, right? Um, I said it'll be a hundred billion market cap and it's past that. Um, uh, there's a lot of rumors spreading around on Twitter, you know, saying Ripple is going to be the next coin being, um, that's going to be added to Coinbase. At this point, I feel like if Coinbase was going to add a coin, it would be stupid of them not to add Ripple, okay, to be honest. So... Um, I also think Ripple will be the next coin to add. However, let me say, however, we're talking about a coin that is already 113 billion market cap, and this is circulating. Okay, this is all circulating. Now, in BTC world, right, um, the 16 million or 17 million, there's a lot that's not mined yet. Okay, remember it's 21 million, so there's roughly 5 million that's not mined yet. And there's some that's already destroyed, but obviously no one knows what that number is. That's why it's a circulating supply of 16, you know, 0.7 million. Ripple, however, is all pre-mined. So there's a lot of circulating, okay, or a lot of coins not circulating that is in the holders of the founders, okay? Um, and that is a substantial amount. So if you actually add all that into the total if you calculate what the market cap is of total supply and not just circulating supply ripple is already past bitcoin okay and i bring that up i'm not trying to put fud on on ripple but i just want you guys to know that it is at a insanely high level already 
okay i know there's a lot of uh there, you know there's a lot of excitement over ripple i like ripple um i put i, I even said yesterday it's a long-term hold but you gotta you gotta uh, be reasonable with your expectations, right? Like just uh, just like how we saw Bitcoin Cash pretty much double overnight after being added to Bitcoin. If Ripple double overnight, if it adds to Coinbase, that means it'll be at 200 and 200 and uh, almost 40 million market cap, and that's circulating supply. And if you look at total supply, it'll be at like 400 billion, right? So is Ripple worth that much right now? I, I can't say yes. Uh, I don't think so. Okay, this is a lot of excitement going on. Ripple is going on one of those ultra pumps. Um, it's, I would say it's unwarranted in terms of how fast it's been pumped. Okay, I see that if we were at the end of 2018, uh, Ripple being at above 100 billion, you know, I wouldn't even think about it because I'm pretty sure everything else would be up 10x as well but the fact that ripple has gone up almost 10x you know within a few months yeah that's just really high but anyways again ripple's not bad it's a long-term hold but just set your expectations even if it gets added to coinbase i don't think the results is going to be as high as a lot of people thinks it will be okay um let's see ethereum you know still not, it, it went up huge yesterday so it's kind of hovering see this big jump right here 900 which is great um i think ethereum will hit 100 billion soon that's, that's no brainer uh bitcoin cash kind of hovering the two big highlights of the top 10 um is definitely well i, I should say three okay because nem also went up big cardano which I kind of expected although i said that cardano's high i said you know what it's not unreasonable to see cardano you know at the 30 uh, billion mark right i said i think 25 to 30 billion so it's right around there i do think cardano's gonna go up more because of this roadmap release that they're gonna do now after the roadmap i don't anticipate i don't anticipate this is one of those like sell the news kind of things i do think cardano will hold after a roadmap will probably slow down for a long time but all the excitement is over that roadmap release um stellar uh, you know i told you guys out of the top 10 15 i said stellar watch stellar it's gonna go up and up and up because it's it's following the coattails of ripple right and it's gone up dramatically 56 percent even at these levels uh, I'm gonna be quite frank. I don't think this goes. I, I don't think this is where it's gonna end. I think this is gonna end right around here, between four and five, and that's a big gap, right? I, I think it could go as high as uh, 25, 30 billion where Cardano is, and it could even go higher. Okay, um, a month ago it was unreasonable to think that way. Just like a month ago, it was unreasonable to think Ripple would be at 292 at 113 billion. Okay, but I've been, you know, reevaluating. I've been saying this is a common theme, reevaluating this market cap thing because before, you know, I had a ceiling for all these, right? And now the ceiling ceilings have been all shattered and I have to reevaluate what the new floor is and what the new ceiling is and seeing how high Ripple is, it, you know, it wouldn't surprise me Stellar was at, you know, 25, 30 billion um, in a couple of weeks. Um, and I say a couple weeks, it might get there in like two days, but I do think it's going to go up. Um, Litecoin's, you know, hovering from yesterday, 250s, not bad. Um, NEM continues to go up. I might have to, you know, I haven't talked about NEM a lot. i talked about it a few times, but uh, I've been watching and watching and watching it. Um, I'm getting a feeling that NEM is going to go higher too because of the fact that they're very associated with Asia, specifically Japan, and Japan is huge for cryptocurrency, they legalize Bitcoin, they have Monacoin, I talked about them in the past, and NEM is also in the financial sector with banks and in Asia. And I have a feeling because of what's going on with Ripple, people are paying attention to NEM a lot more as well. So NEM, as you guys know, um, they were at 2 billion, they, they jumped to four or 5 billion because of this uh, WeChat thing. And since then, from 6 billion, they doubled to 12 billion. Um, I do think them is going to go higher. The only reason why they haven't moved up more is because how fast these other coins have gone up. But you know what? Um, can't ignore them anymore. I, I think that um, I'm going to do more research, but my gut tells me them is going to go higher as well. 
could go as high as 15, 20 billion dollars. Um, IOTA is still kind of hovering, but it went up yesterday, so four dollars. Don't worry about it for those that are holding on IOTA. When it moves, it will move. Um, Dash Monero, uh, Neo EOS kind of hovering again, it's okay. Tron, I mentioned Tron was on the verge of becoming a big cap, which means it's five plus billion. And that's, I just made that up, right? There's there's no one in the industry that kind of just made up what big cap is and small cap is. I like using big cap because I think it's just, it just represents that you're talking about a coin and that's a substantial, right? Five plus billion um, and it's there. So it'll be interesting to see if it can hold, if it can hold, consolidate above five billion, then that means it's going ahead of much higher. Um, I'm really a big fan of Tron. Um, Bitcoin Gold, um, Quantum, you know, staggered a little bit. It didn't go up yesterday, it didn't go up today. I'm just wondering, I mean, it's gone up tri quite tremendously. As well, um, NEO have as well. So we'll, we'll have to see. I think it will catch up to NEO soon. Uh, Rybox, uh, finally, it's gone down, um, but still, it's, you know, it's, it's been going up and up and up and up. Um, uh, was it, BitConnect, I don't need to talk about them. Icon, a little bit, not too much, list down a little bit. Status is up huge, okay? Um, I talked about status yesterday. I looked it up. There's no reason why it's being, it's gone up. There's no reason why it should go up 86% other than the people are just excited about it and there's a pump going on. But status overall, I think it's a good project. Um, it turns out they're they're still in their test net. Their, their, their main net is not out yet, but maybe when it comes out, I hear that it's in Q1, it can make this explode. Um, I think the biggest thing with status is it's kind of like a browser. How I explain it, it's like, a browser for Ethereum, okay? Um, they're trying to make this universal app that has a wallet, so you could buy and sell and trade uh, Ethereum. It has a built-in messaging. It has uh, it has an app store, basically, and the app store will be the other Ethereum-based or ERC-20-based um, coins, and it'll be listed in this nice little app store within the status um, app. So. I think it's kind of like first is a kind like where it's kind of like a, it gives you a visual look of these other apps. Um, so it'll be cool. it, it sounds cool. Um, so we'll have to see what happens after they release their uh, main app. But in the meantime, this might go up higher. I don't know too much about this. I, I can't say I can't really say this is going to go up to four billion. I, I don't know at this point. Um, Steam is still going on from yesterday. No real reason for that. Ardor, a lot of people are asking about Ardor, like what's going on? Why is this not going up? You know, just 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 wait it out. The wallet is still locked on Bittrex right now. Um, I, I know that they're working on it. So just give it more time. It you know, when the main net opens, even when the main net opens, doesn't mean this is go pop like to three dollars right away or four dollars, right? Even when the main net opens, you got you gotta be reasonable, set your expectations, right? Uh, there's not that many people that can just get on it and use it. The main net's there, but you gotta have apps that's built for it. So it doesn't mean that it's just go skyrocket overnight, right? But a lot of people have high hopes for it. This is, a, I've talked about Ardor many times. I love Ardor, first generation three platform coin that really is, you know, has like a six to 12 month advantage over Cardano and EOS. So it'll be interesting to see if they can take advantage of that. Um, going down the list, I mean a lot, a lot of these are red, but really they're just non-movers, right? Um, Komodo, I mentioned them a few times. They're by the team who made Bitcoin Dark, which um, I mentioned this a few days ago. If you have Bitcoin Dark, you can swap for Komodo to a 1 to 50 ratio. So if you actually look at the calculation of how much Bitcoin Dark is, um, you can make money by doing that, or you could buy Komodo for cheap. However... I've been hearing that the team that made Komodo, which is the team that made Bitcoin Dark, they have gone through like five or six coins that's all unsuccessful. Every single one has ended, and Komodo is kind of their last chance of making a coin happen. You know, they did an ICO, they raised a lot of money. Um, they're obviously worth a billion, but however, their track record hasn't been stellar. So just, just keep that in mind. Again, not trying to throw fun at Komodo, but just to let you guys know, if you do some research, 
the previous founders have found like five or six coins that they all have given up on and tried to create something else and Komodo is the last time um, KuCoin shares um, you know a lot of these new newer uh, or uh, yeah I should say newer coins that isn't being on listed on Binance is actually being listed on KuCoin um, so it's quite interesting they look pretty good they're they're exchange out of China so I'm a little hesitant about recommending any exchange within China Binance is different because Binance is from Hong Kong and a lot of people don't know this but China pretty much leaves Hong Kong alone right so all these bans like Facebook ban Google ban all that stuff it's not banned in Hong Kong because it's kind of like the two the, either, even though Hong Kong belongs to China they kind of left them alone because of their uh, their past influence with uh, Britain and stuff like that. So anything in Hong Kong is a little bit different. Just like all the exchanges that got shut down in China, they opened them up in Hong Kong and they're still operating. Uh, KuCoin, from what my research is, they're still operating in China, except they just don't allow people to buy and sell Bitcoin. Um, so again, you got to be a little cautious. But I will say that they're... Their site, they pretty much, they're trying to copy Binance. If you look at it, they, they look very similar to Binance. They came out their own coin, just like Binance. So they're following Binance's footsteps, uh, obviously. And a lot of these newer coins that are promising are on KuCoin. So uh, I don't know. It's too early to tell right now um, in terms of their, you know, if they're trustworthy or not, let's say. A lot of, a lot of red. Enigma, Aeon is up. Enigma, um, I'm kind of neutral with them. I, I don't know what to say for now. I'm just going to leave it at that. Aeon is, is kind of like another Generation 3 platform coin, but really they're working on the ability to for, um, for blockchains to talk to each other, which is very promising. I actually like them a lot, but uh, they got pumped up recently because um, Palm Beach recommended them um and of course now that people are like just manipulating palm beach picks as soon as one comes out it skyrockets okay by the whales they purposely make it skyrocket get people in and then they dump it so unfortunately aeon is actually i think lower than where it was before the pump um but overall i like aeon but we'll, we'll see where it goes um Power Ledger, one, you know, around 140, still good. Bitcoin Dark, I just talked about it. I mean, if you do a 1 to 50 ratio, if you just buy one one coin of this, you're going to get a lot of Komodo. Um, Civic going up a little bit. Uh, Experience Power, they went down like 45%, and now they're up 98%. I, I would just stay away from Experience Power for now, okay? Let, let this settle. I don't think it's worth $420 million. Um, red coin going up and down, up and down, uh, up 39%. Um, extra bytes. Uh, I don't know why they're they're this high. Decentraland again, one of those things that goes up and down. Not too big of a fan of uh, Decentraland. Substratum I talked about yesterday it was like 112. They're going up a little bit. I like them a lot. Um, I hear Skycoin. So some people talking about Skycoin. I haven't looked them up, but I hear Skycoin is the competitor of Substratum. So if they are and they're trying to make a decentralized internet, it's fitting that they're both next next uh, next to each other. Um, uh, Quant Stamp still for you know dropped a little bit, but still at forty four, which is really good. Centra back up in the top one hundred at four dollars, which is good. Uh, Walton is good. Let's see. Blocknet, yeah, very little. Agile is going down a little bit. All right, so um, I'll reveal the two picks that I revealed to. I actually have three picks that I revealed to insiders um, two days ago. First one is Poet, which I've already covered a, a little bit. I like Poet a lot. Okay, it hasn't moved that much. But I think their overall potential is huge. Basically, it's um, it's a platform to license um, uh, digital content, and specifically more around um, like articles and blog code stuff like that. Not so much on pictures, 
just yet, but it could definitely expand there. So like right now, if you go on the internet, you can find any article, right, on any site, and you don't know really who wrote it and where it originated from, right? Because people, bloggers, article writers, content writers, they're not going to take the time to go copyright their work or trademark whatever they talk about, right? Because they're, they're just cranking it out, and it's not worth the time or effort to do so. But because of that, anyone could just take a copy and copy it and put it on their site, or they can sell it or license it out or whatever. So that's what Poet is trying to do. They make it really easy for you to basically um, license your work, right? Everything gets stored um, in their blockchain, and then you can prove it. You can prove that you're the, you're the one that licensed it. And they're trying to create this store where once you have your like work all licensed, you can license that out to other people to use. So it's a really interesting concept. Um, I think it's going to be huge for internet because as more and more websites come out and there's more and more content you really don't know who you could trust um poet is making it really easy they're coming out with the wordpress um uh app in q1 um and they're backed by some big people so if you guys are interested definitely look up poet and look at who they're backed by and what they're trying to do i think it's a phenomenal idea and project so that was one of my picks um and it's to be honest it didn't really move that much um, I mentioned Athlon a couple times. They're kind of holding steady. I'm waiting for this to explode in a big way. I think they will soon. All right. The other pick um, that released was uh, Uni Unicoin Gold. And this made a big deal because this was about maybe, I don't know, four or five months ago. Remember Mark Cuban, you know, he was like kind of like Jamie Dimon back in the day where he's like, Bitcoin's a bubble, everyone should get out, it's not going to last. And all of a sudden, you hear him endorsing an ICO. And the, what does he endorse? He endorses Unicoin Gold. And Unicoin Gold is out of Asia, they're in esports betting. So if you want to bet on these tournaments, right? They already have a platform to do so. So they have this Unicoin platform that already does it. And they make tens to hundreds of millions of bets a year. So they're already huge and established, but they want to raise more funds. So they decided to come up with a new product with the Unicoin Gold. They want to transist everything to the uh, decentralized version. And they got huge amount of celebrity power. So they got Mark Cuban, Ashton Kutcher, and there's uh, several others, like main big people, celebrities, to invest in it, right? Um, so after it came out of ICO, it didn't really move, and I started noticing it started creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. And I think that Unicoin Gold has huge potential because esports is getting huge. On, it, within Asia, it's huge. It's like, like South Korea, Japan, and China, esports is by far the largest sports, okay? Um, but then, you know, when you shift to Western world, you got a lot of teams, you got a lot of esports, but, you know, they're nothing compared to, say, soccer or football and stuff like that, right? But it is growing. It's uh, it's not going to go any, any way. It's not going to go away anytime soon. And just like sports betting, esports betting is going to be huge. It's already huge, but it's going to get bigger. So Unicoin Gold is in position to, to, to take advantage of that. And plus... You know, just like you guys have seen, John McAfee sends out a tweet and Verge just goes up, you know, crazily. Just imagine, if Mark Cuban's active on Twitter. Imagine one, one day he's like, yeah, you know what? I think Unicoin Gold is going to be the future. Or, yeah, it's a great investment. Just one tweet from him will send this up probably tenfold, okay? Um, so, just want to let you guys know this is the other pick that I released in Insider and has done really well. Um, I mentioned there's a third pick. I'm not going to mention that just yet because I didn't really officially announce it, but people just kind of, I gave clues and people kind of guessed what it is. So I'm going to announce that probably later today. And um, and that one has huge potential and is going up as well. Um, that's pretty much it. I think overall, um, you know, Wabi's down a little bit, but overall they've been up. I like Wabi a lot. Um yeah, I think I think that's pretty much it. Oh, I talked about bread before too. Um, okay, so overall the market, 
I think the market is more green than red. Um, definitely a lot more money into the overall market cap, which means that people are dumping in money. But again, just don't forget that, you know, on a dime, you can have Bitcoin go up a thousand points, two thousand points. We have seen Bitcoin go up as high as three thousand points within one night. OK, that can happen any time. If that happens, if Bitcoin shoots up to eighteen, nineteen thousand within an hour, I'll bet you anything. OK, all coins drain like crazy. There will be nothing stopping all coins from training. So um, be prepared for yourself. Like I said, we're pawns in this game. OK, none of us. I'm sure none of you guys watching this have billions upon billions of dollars that you could pour into altcoins. I don't either, right? So we're pawns in this. The big institutional investors in Wales are the ones that's really driving the market and they control it however they want. So the only thing we can do is play it smart, right? Prepare ourselves and then we're set to take advantage of the market. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you guys later. That was, you know, I was starting to lose a lot of people because I kept saying, and yesterday I kept saying, history repeats itself, Bitcoin will come back up, and it's important to have a large portion of your portfolio in Bitcoin. Everyone kept questioning me on it, why, 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 you know, you know, I haven't seen it. You know, history always repeats itself, and everyone has a short-term memory because just a month ago, you know, two months ago, we have seen when Bitcoin goes on these ultra pumps, um... It drains the altcoins, and it did that exactly yesterday afternoon when Bitcoin jumped from thirteen thousand to fifteen thousand. You saw every single altcoin tank by twenty to thirty percent almost instantly. Every single thing across the board, and then once Bitcoin got above fifteen thousand, it, it stopped and it kind of went down a little bit, and everything else recovered. You see that all the time, okay? And for us, you and I, and everyone else watching this. We don't know what's really going on, okay? Because on the grand scheme of things, we're, we're just the pawns in this game, okay? So let me say that, that the institutional investors or the big whales, they're the ones pulling all the strings, okay? At any given time, if they wanted to, and they say, you know what? Let's shift 200 billion out of the altcoins into Bitcoin, and they click a button and make that happen, you know, we have no idea. That's all in the background. But the only thing we can do is play the market smart. Right. So if you set yourself up, you set your portfolio up the right way, you minimize risk and you and you still gain when the market goes up. Right. So that's why I advocate that. Um, I think yesterday was a good example of that it, and there was another point. I think yesterday night that also kind of did that. So just be careful. Just because we haven't seen much of it the last month doesn't mean January. We're not going to see a lot more of it. Maybe next week, you know, when we're finally back from holidays. Um, you'll 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 see more of that. So just be prepared. Um, all right. So overall, um, Bitcoin is up nine percent, which is really good. But fifteen thousand um, BTC dominance, like I said, is still low. But I anticipate it will start going up and up and up. Um, Ripple, uh, you know what can I say? It's on a tear, right? Um, I said it'll be a hundred billion market cap, and it's past that. Um, uh, there's a lot of rumors spreading around on Twitter, you know, saying Ripple is going to be the next coin being, um, that's going to be added to Coinbase. At this point, I feel like if Coinbase was going to add a coin, it would be stupid of them not to add Ripple, okay, to be honest. So, um, I also think Ripple will be the next coin to add. However, let me say, however, we're talking about a coin that is already 113 billion market cap, and this is circulating, okay? This is all circulating. Now, in BTC world, right, um, this, it can make this explode. Um, I think the biggest thing with status is it's kind of like a browser. How I explain it, it's like a browser for Ethereum, okay? Um, they're trying to make this universal app that has a wallet so you could buy and sell and trade uh, Ethereum. It has a built-in messaging. It has uh, it has an app store, basically, and the app store will be the other Ethereum-based or ERC-20-based app um, coins, and it'll be listed in this nice little app store within the status um, app. So I think it's kind of like the first of the kind, like where it's kind of like a, it gives you a visual look of these other apps. Um, so it'll be cool. it sounds cool. Um, 
So we'll have to see what happens after they release their uh, main app. But in the meantime, this might go up higher. I don't know too much about this. I, I can't say, I can't really say this is going to go up to $4 billion. I, I don't know at this point. Um, Steam is still going on from yesterday. No real reason for that. Ardor, a lot of people are asking about Ardor. Like, what's going on? Why is this not going up? You know, just, just, just wait it out. The wallet is still locked on Bittrex right now. Um, I, I know that they're working on it. So just give it more time. It, you know, when the mainnet opens, even when the mainnet opens, doesn't mean this is going to pop like to $3 right away or $4, right? Even when the mainnet opens, you got you got to be reasonable. Set your expectations, right? Uh, there's not that many people that can just get on it and use it. The mainnet's there, but you got to have apps that's built for it. So it doesn't mean that it's just going to skyrocket overnight. Right, but a lot of people have high hopes for it. This is a, I, I've talked about Ardor many times. I love Ardor, first generation three platform coin that really is you know has like a six to twelve month advantage over Cardano and EOS. So it'll be interesting to see if they can take advantage of that. Um, going down the list, I mean a lot a lot of these are red, but really they're just non movers, right? Um, Komodo, I mentioned them a few times. They're by the team who made Bitcoin Dark, which um, I mentioned this a few days ago. If you have Bitcoin Dark, you can swap for Komodo to a 1 to 50 ratio. So if you actually look at the calculation of how much Bitcoin Dark is, um, you can make money by doing that. Or you could buy Komodo for cheap. However, I've been hearing that the team that made Komodo, which is the team that made Bitcoin Dark, they have gone through like five or six coins that's all unsuccessful. Every single one has ended, and Komodo is kind of their last chance of making a coin happen. You know, they did an ICO, they raised a lot of money. Um, they're obviously worth a billion, but however, their track record hasn't been stellar. So just just keep that in mind. Again, not trying to throw fun at Komodo, but just to let you guys know, if you do some research, the previous founders have found like today, no real reason for that. Ardor, a lot of people are asking about Ardor, like what's going on? Why is this not going up? You know, just 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 wait it out. The wallet is still locked on Bittrex right now. Um, I, I know that they're working on it. So just give it more time. It, you know, when the mainnet opens, even when the mainnet opens, doesn't mean this is going to pop like to three dollars right away or four dollars. Right. Even when the mainnet opens, you got you got to be reasonable. Set your expectations. Right. Uh, there's not that many people that can just get on it and use it the main that's there but you got to have apps that's built for it so it doesn't mean that it's just go skyrocket overnight right but a lot of people have high hopes for it this is a, i've talked about ardor many times i love ardor first generation three platform coin that really is you know has like a six to twelve month advantage over cardano and yeah so it'll be interesting to see if they can take advantage of that um going down the list i mean a lot a lot of these are red, but really they're just non-movers, right? Um, Komodo, I mentioned them a few times. They're by the team who made Bitcoin Dark, which um, I mentioned this a few days ago. If you have Bitcoin Dark, you can swap for Komodo to a 1 to 50 ratio. So if you actually look at the calculation of how much Bitcoin Dark is, um, you can make money by doing that. Or you could buy Komodo for cheap. However... I've been hearing that the team that made Komodo, which is the team that made Bitcoin Dark, they have gone through like five or six coins that's all unsuccessful. Every single one has ended, and Komodo is kind of their last chance of making a coin happen. You know, they did an ICO, they raised a lot of money. Um, they're obviously worth a billion, but however, their track record hasn't been stellar. So just, just keep that in mind. Again, not trying to throw fun at Komodo, but just to let you guys know, if you do some research, the previous founders have found like five or six coins that they all have given up on and tried to create something else. And Komodo is the last time. Um, KuCoin shares. Um, you know, a lot of these new, newer, uh, or uh, yeah, I should say newer coins that isn't being listed on Binance is actually being listed on KuCoin. Um, so it's quite interesting. They look pretty good. They're, they're exchange out of China. So I'm a little hesitant about recommending any exchange within China. Binance is different because Binance is from Hong Kong. And a lot of people don't know this, but 
China pretty much leaves Hong Kong alone, right? So all these bans, like Facebook ban, Google ban, all that stuff, it's not banned in Hong Kong because it's kind of like the two, the, either, even though Hong Kong belongs to China, they kind of left them alone because of their uh, their past influence with uh, Britain and stuff like that. So anything in Komodo for cheap. However, I've been hearing that the team that made Komodo, which is the team that made Bitcoin Dark, they have gone through like five or six coins that's all unsuccessful. Every single one has ended and Komodo is kind of their last chance of making a coin happen. You know, they did an ICO, they raised a lot of money. Um, they're obviously worth a billion, but however, their track record hasn't been stellar. So just, just keep that in mind. Again, not trying to throw fun at Komodo, but just to let you guys know, if you do some research, the previous founders have found like five or six coins that they all have given up on and tried to create something else. And Komodo is the last time. Um, KuCoin shares. Um, you know, a lot of these new, newer, uh, or uh, yeah, I should say newer coins that isn't being listed on Binance is actually being listed on KuCoin. Um, so it's quite interesting. They look pretty good. They're, they're exchange out of China. So I'm a little hesitant about recommending any exchange within China. Binance is different because Binance is from Hong Kong. And a lot of people don't know this, but China pretty much leaves Hong Kong alone, right? So all these bans, like Facebook ban, Google ban, all that stuff, it's not banned in Hong Kong because it's kind of like the two... The, either, even though Hong Kong belongs to China, they kind of left them alone because of their uh, their past influence with uh, Britain and stuff like that. So anything in Hong Kong is a little bit different, just like all the exchanges that got shut down in China. They opened them up in Hong Kong and they're still operating. Uh, KuCoin, from what my research is, they're still operating in China, except they just don't allow people to buy and sell Bitcoin. Um, so... Again, you gotta be a little cautious, but I will say that their their site, they pretty much, they're trying to copy Binance. If you look at it, they, they look very similar to Binance. They came out their own coin, just like Binance. So they're following Binance's footsteps, uh, obviously. And a lot of these newer coins that are promising are on KuCoin. So uh, I don't know, it's too early to tell right now um, in terms of their, you know, if they're trustworthy or not, let's say. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of red. Enigma, Aeon is up. Enigma, um, I'm kind of neutral with them. I, I don't know what to say for now. I'm just going to leave it at that. Aeon is, is kind of like another Generation 3 platform coin, but really they're working on the ability to for, um, for blockchains to talk to each other, which is very promising. I actually like them a lot, but uh, they got pumped up recently because... Um, Palm Beach recommended them. Um, and of course, now that people are like, you know what, it's not unreasonable to see Cardano, you know, at the 30 uh, billion mark, right? I said, I think 25 to 30 billion. So it's right around there. I do think Cardano is going to go up more because of this roadmap release that they're going to do. Now, after the roadmap, I don't anticipate, I don't anticipate this is one of those like, sell the news kind of things. I do think Cardano will hold after a roadmap. It'll probably slow down for a long time, but all the excitement is over that roadmap release. Um, Stellar, uh, you know, I told you guys, out of the top 10, 15, I said Stellar. Watch Stellar, it's gonna go up and up and up because it's it's following the coattails of Ripple, right? And it's gone up dramatically, 56%. Even at these levels, uh, I'm gonna be quite frank. I don't think this goes. I, I don't think this is where it's gonna end. I think this is gonna end right around here, between four and five, and that's a big gap, right? I, I think it could go as high as uh, 25, 30 billion where Cardano is, and it could even go higher. Okay, um, a month ago it was unreasonable to think that way. Just like a month ago, it was unreasonable to think Ripple would be at 292 at 113 billion. Okay, but I've been, you know, reevaluating. I've been saying this is a common theme, reevaluating this market cap thing because before, you know, I had a ceiling for all these, right? And now the ceiling ceilings have been all shattered and I have to reevaluate what the new floor is and what the new ceiling is and seeing how high Ripple is, 
it you know it wouldn't surprise me stellar was at you know 25 30 billion um in a couple of weeks um and i say a couple of weeks it might get there in like two days but i do think it's gonna go up um likewise you know hovering from yesterday 250s not bad um nem continues to go up i might have to you know i haven't talked about nem a lot i talked about it a few times but uh, i've been watching and watching and watching it um, I'm getting a feeling that NEM is going to go higher too because of the fact that they're very associated with Asia, specifically Japan, and Japan is huge for cryptocurrency. They legalize Bitcoin. They have Monacoin. I talked about them in the past. And NEM is also in the financial sector with banks and in Asia. And I have a feeling because of what's going on with Ripple, people are paying attention to NEM a lot more as well. So NEM, as you guys know, um, they were at two billion. They they jumped to four or five billion because of this uh, WeChat thing, and since then, from six billion, they doubled to twelve billion. Um, I do think them is gonna go higher. The only reason why they haven't moved up more is because how fast these other coins have gone up. But you know what? Um, can't ignore them anymore. I, I think that um, I'm gonna do more research, but my gut tells me them is gonna go higher as well. I think Ethereum will hit 100 billion soon. That's, that's a no-brainer. Uh, Bitcoin Cash kind of hovering. The two big highlights of the top 10 um, is definitely, well, I, I should say three. Okay, because NEM also went up big. Cardano, which I kind of expected. Although I said that Cardano is high, I said, you know what? It's not unreasonable to see Cardano, you know, at the 30 uh, billion mark, right? I said, I think 25 to 30 billion. So it's right around there. I do think Cardano is going to go up more because of this roadmap release that they're going to do. Now, after the roadmap, I don't anticipate. I don't anticipate this is one of those like sell the news kind of things. I do think Cardano will hold after the roadmap. It'll probably slow down for a long time, but all the excitement is over that roadmap release. Um, Stellar, uh, you know, I told you guys out of the top 10, 15, I said Stellar. Watch Stellar. It's going to go up and up and up because it's it's following the coattails of ripple right and it's gone up dramatically 56 percent even at these levels uh, i'm gonna be quite frank i don't think this goes I, I don't think this is where it's going to end. i think this is going to end right around here between four and five and that's a big gap right i, I think it could go as high as uh 25 30 billion where cardano is and it could even go higher okay um a month ago, it was unreasonable to think that way. Just like a month ago, it was unreasonable to think Ripple would be at 292 at 113 billion. Okay, but I've been, you know, reevaluating. I've been saying this is a common theme: reevaluating this market cap thing because before, you know, I had a ceiling for all these, right? And now the ceiling ceilings have been all shattered, and I have to reevaluate what the new floor is and what the new ceiling is, and seeing how high Ripple is. It you know it wouldn't surprise me. Stellar was at you know 25, 30 billion um, in a couple weeks, um, and I say a couple weeks. It might get there in like two days, but I do think it's gonna go up. Um, likewise, you know, hovering from yesterday, 250s, not bad. Um, Nem continues to go up. I might have to you know I haven't talked about Nem a lot. I talked about it a few times, but uh, I've been watching and watching and watching it. Um, I'm getting a feeling that NEM is going to go higher too because of the fact that they're very associated with Asia, specifically Japan, and Japan is huge for cryptocurrency. They legalize Bitcoin. They have Monacoin. I talked about them in the past. And NEM is also in the financial sector with banks and in Asia. And I have a feeling because of what's going on with Ripple, people are paying attention to NEM a lot more as well. So NEM, as you guys know, um, they were at two billion. They they jumped to four or five billion because of this uh, WeChat thing, and since then from.